Offbeat Cinema, brought to you by Mighty Taco. For 50 years, everyone in Buffalo and beyond has enjoyed the great taste of Mighty. Find out more at MightyTaco.com. And by Extreme Discount Mattress. George Costello sells mattresses for less, a lot less, in store and online at ExtremeMattress.com. Welcome, cool cats and wagon chicks from out there in the dark. Welcome to the Hungrier Coffee House and another edition of Offbeat Cinema. Now, my name is Theo. Zelda, well, she's still in Berkeley, California, checking out the philosophy department. So it's just going to be Bird and I tonight. And I asked Bird to get here early, as I know he has absolutely no concept of time. Not here yet, but you know, I hope he gets here soon. Oh, oh yeah, hey, man! Oh, I'm here. Yeah, I'm yes. here. I'm here on time. Well, just uh, like we planned. The, listen, actually, Bird, you're not on time. You're about a half hour late as always. Ah, oh, what? How, how, well, Theo, like since I'm always a half an hour late, I guess I am right on time. You dig? You know, actually, I do, Bird. That scares me a little bit. Anyway. Zelda is not here tonight, so let's just get right to our movie, shall we? You know, I'm all for that, you know, but I think our movie tonight is really, really cool, but I'm not sure if Zelda would be a big fan of this movie, as big a fan as we are. Well, that's very possible. I think you're right, Bert. Hipsters, we are showing a very interesting movie tonight that is kind of a genre all its own. We're showing Ghosts on the Loose starring the East Side Kids with a special guest appearance by our patron saint, Bela Lugosi. Ah, oh, Bela. <laughs> I always love a night when Bela shows up, you know, and this film is really funny, and it has a vibe to it that all its own, and, you know, like we say about so many of our movies, it's like a time capsule from a, you know, kind of like a time when every guy seemed to wear a suit every day, you know, even if they were a construction worker or unemployed, and, you know, the smart Alex, uh, they can get whacked in the face or punched in the stomach. You know what I'm <laughs> yes, saying? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. That wasn't bad. Uh, <laughs> Edward D. Robinson. Well, uh, Cats, uh, Ghost on the Loose was released uh, sort of at the height of World War II, um, 1943. And it's one of two films that uh, our friend Vela made with the East Side Kids. He plays, uh, not coincidentally, a Nazi in this one. And. Um, uh, the, boy, the Eastside Kids go way back to the early 1930s with Warner Brothers, and then later on they became the Bowery Boys in the 1950s. But they had a pretty good string of films back in, in the mid-40s well, with Monogram Studios, and I think Ghost on the Loose is a very good example of uh, Leo Gorsi and Hunt Hall and all the gang. All the gang, man. I, I remember watching them the Bowery Boys when I was just a little kid, all the half-hour TV episodes. But let's get to this one tonight, Ghosts on the Loose, starring the East Side Kids. And, you know, the joint tonight is jumping. We got this cool flick, viewer mail, and a special guest, musical guest, Stress Dolls. So, here it all begins. Dig it. Ghosts on the Loose.
broken down dirge. Hey, Dave! Dave! What color are your eyes? Hmm. If you don't want them to be black, you better keep them open. I want you to pay some attention to this lethargy in opera. Yes, sir. Benny! You're dimming a little on your dimmy window. Oh, that's fine. Yes, great. You, from you, I want a little more sweetness. But I'm singing sweet. If you can't sing any sweeter than that, you better hum. <clears throat> and Rocky, MF, that's for you. MF, what does that mean? Well, uh, I don't know. Look, it says MF there. What do I know from those Latin abbreviations? Hey, um, I, uh, think it means, uh, mid-feeling, mid-feeling. Danny, you let me down the worst of all. Your moderato obligato was just a little bit, uh, staccato, uh, what? I feel awfully sorry, but I got a cold. Quick, quick, he's in voice. Play it again, play it again. <laughs> play it again, I say. Come on, once more. <laughs> Oh, you ain't heard nothing yet. Why don't we polish it off a little? Oh, good! <laughs> Is she kidding? He must have a tin ear. Yeah, we're pretty good. I'm gonna tell you something. This thing must have some more crescendo. If you ask me, it's a little bit on the stinkato side. You know what I mean. Now, Scuno and Glimpy, let's have your version of this number. Drink to me only. With the eyes of you. See what I mean? Yeah. You know what you were doing before? Yeah. You see what they're doing now? Yeah. Well, I want you to reach a happy medium. Oh. Now, hit that last note. What are you doing? You told me to hit it. You're going to jail him, a minor. Give him a pick and send him home. <laughs> Give him a pick in the head. <laughs> Come on, more music. Kid, you'll get a draw. Now, don't let me stop you. Keep right on rehearsing. It's getting better all the time. <laughs> oh, Ma, will you go upstairs? Hey, let's go to my house. It's quiet today. I uh, will never get rehearsed. My boy thinking the whole Hey, Mark, why can't I sing in a quartet? I used to sing in a quartet with six members. I can sing those four tissy malls aloud, too. You can't sing at this ceremony. You're the best man. I wouldn't say that. I'm pretty good. You're only the best man because your sister's getting married. It don't mean you're the best, or it don't even mean you're a man. Now, do you know what to do when this ritual starts? Yeah, when a guy asks me for the ring, I run home and get it. What do you mean you run home and get it? You already got it. I don't see it. Flippy, did you hot that ring? Oh, Muggs, you cut me to the quick. Here, your veil, dear. Oh. <laughs> oh, you look beautiful. Oh, yeah, Mommy, you promised not to cry. No, oh, I know, I know. But when I think of you moving clear out into the country, into a strange house you've never even seen. It isn't so far. It's only two miles from the end of the subway, and Jack says it's beautiful. Oh. We were lucky to get it so cheap. I suppose so, but when I think the of you... The owner promised to be out today, and we can move in tonight. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, then, Mommy, don't cry. You get your nose all red. Come on, let's try on the veil. Oh. I will not take. What is this, Duffy Stafford? <laughs> hey, right. mighty nice of you guys to go to all this trouble. You ain't seen nothing. This is going to be the most pretentious wedding that Avenue A ever witnessed. 
Where's Betty? Yeah, she's in the room seeing which window curtain looks best on her. <laughs> yeah, watch out for my glasses. You want a police escort at this wedding? Oh, I'm afraid they only go to society weddings, Muggs. You want a police escort? For sure. I'll get it. How do you like the police? How does it look? Oh, it looks fine. I think it needs a few more declarations. Hey, Stag, Skinny, Scruto. Yeah. Get out there and rustle up some more flowers. Oh, that's fine. Some more flowers? All right. All right, let's go. Snap on. Get me for two. Will you burn your yeah. room? What's the matter, Jackie? Are you nervous? Oh, not at all. I thought I would be. Oh, oh, Glimpy, before I forget it, here, you better take this ring. Oh, he ain't nervous. Look at his hand. Better stay off cook. Good luck. Hold it and don't lose it. Oh, I won't lose it. I'll put it right here so we can do it. You'll lose it if you put it there. Here, keep it on your finger. There. Now you won't lose it. Does this mean we're engaged? Oh, you... <laughs> What are you wearing this afternoon? Uh, I'm gonna wear my uh, black and white checker ensemble. You can't wear that zoot suit. This is a serious occasion. What are you wearing, Jack? A tuxedo. All right, Danny, Rocky, go out and get Glimpy a tuxedo, a reasonable facsimile. Right. On our way, Mud. Hey, you think I'm wearing one of the monkey suits with a collar and tie? You wear what I tell you, and you'll like it. Okay, we'll get it a wear it. Say, has the agent been here with the papers on my house yet? That's it. You know, I wish I was a big airplane engineer so I could buy one of those houses in the suburbs. <laughs> well, the house is a steel mug, so I couldn't have bought it. I only hope there isn't anything wrong with it. Well, what makes you think there's anything wrong with it? It's too good to be true. Oh, you just got those before the wedding jitters. You'll get over that. You need a little more experience. You really think the place looks pretty nice, huh? Oh, it's fine, Muggs. Yeah, it could look better with some of them pictures on the wall, those uh, paintings, those morales. Not morales, moral. Look, uh, do you guys mean uh, murals? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. He threw me off, yeah. you know, he's so <laughs> dumb sometimes. Well, look, I, I, I gotta go make a phone call. I'll see you later. Okay. Hey, Muggs, uh, what is it with those uh, superbs? What are they? Superbs? Well, that's a place where you got no running water, you got no trolley cars, you got nothing. Oh, poor people, huh? That's right. Let's go. Hey, Dave. Dave! Hey, fellas, look here, look. Look, I got some flowers. Put them back, put them back. I only need a little water, that's all. Put them back. Okay. That's supposed to bring good luck. Oh, that's fine. Now, Mug said we got to keep the wedding honest, didn't he? Yeah. Anybody got any strings? Them pretty poses laying there. Must have fallen out of the truck. Yeah. Should I call him back? Yeah, you better. Hey, mister, you dropped your flowers. I guess he didn't hear me. Too bad. Shall we? Calling all beatniks. Looking for offbeat cinema swag? We've got it. T-shirts. 15-ounce classic coffee mugs. Hats. More hats, stickers, and more. Man, like this is commercialism. Cats, do we have off the cinema swag? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Get with the in crowd. Order your offbeat cinema merchandise today. Just go to offbeatcinema.tv for details. Well, I guess that's everything, Mr. Gibson. You have the papers and the keys to the house, and I hope you'll both be very happy in them. Well, thank you very much. Oh, how about the present owners? Have they moved yet? Oh, they'll be out in plenty of time for you to move in. Well, I hope so. <laughs> for all, it's our honeymoon, you know. Oh, sure, sure, I understand. I, I was married myself once. Boy, will I ever forget that. <laughs> well, maybe you'll have better luck. I hope so. Oh, uh, how about the house? Uh, you say it's in pretty good condition. Well, uh, it could stand a little fixing up, maybe. By the way, you're not superstitious, are you? Why? Well, the old couple are trying to tell me that the house next door is haunted. Haunted? <laughs> yes, but you know how old people are, always imagining things. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Of course, it's, it's a lot of nonsense. <laughs> sure. Well, goodbye, Mr. Gibson. Goodbye. And uh, may the house soon be filled with many pleasant memories. Oh, thanks a lot. Bye. Right. Bye. Okay, here's everything except the shoes. You don't need them, do you? Oh, no, thanks. He's got his own shoes. And this collar may be a little small for Glimpy, but it's the best I can do. Oh, uh, that's right. Glimpy's got a small neck anyway. Yeah, this is swell. We'll take good care of it, too. Well, make sure you get it back tonight. I need it for Louis to love tomorrow. 
Okay, come on, Rock. Right, Danny. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, nothing, Mrs. Williams. Nothing at all. Look, can I see Betty just for a minute? Oh, I should say not. Why don't you know it's bad luck for the groom to see his bride before the wedding? Oh, Mom, just for a minute. No, you'll be seeing her soon enough. Now, you run along and sell your papers. Okay. We was just downtown and we heard some detectives down there talking about a mob gonna break in on Jack Gibson's wedding. We didn't think you'd like any of those downtown guys coming up here making a pinch right under your nose. I see. Whose mob is it? Well, we didn't get none of the details. We was in a hurry. I think he said it was one of the Katzman mob. Okay, I'll have a couple of them then. Take care of it. The address is 32 East 33rd Street. 32 East 33rd. Yeah, it's 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. All right, boys. Thanks, Lieutenant. We'll return the favor someday. Hey, Shorty, would you mind sitting over there? That chair is reserved for the bride's mother. Okay, thanks. Stand still, will you? Oh, you look swell, Glippy. What's the trouble? Oh, we can't get this collar on. Can't get the collar on, huh? Stand back. Let me take a crack at it. Get him from the back, Danny. Now push in a little bit. Take a deep breath. Now hold it. Let's see, this one goes in here. Mm -hmm. All right, now, I thought I told you to hold it. What do you think I am, a coil diver? Look, don't give me no opposition. Just do like I tell you. Now pull in your Adam's apple. Pull it in. Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Don't move. Don't. I'm I got it. I got it. Now, I thought I told you to hold your breath. Pull in your Adam's apple. See ya. See ya. I got it. He's all right. Get him up. Let him relax his muscles. All right. Pull him up. Whew. Yeah, how's that? Uh. Good. How's your voice, Danny? It's much better, I think. Well, don't use it till you have to sing. Tight. Oh, it's all in your mind. That's not tight. You got lots of room there. Yeah, you see that? Look what we got. Yeah, Mother, look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, that's got some class. What's that? Oh. Rest in peace. In loving memory to Louis the Lug from the gang, we didn't mean to shoot you, Louis. Honest. Where did you get that? Well, on the street. Yeah, on a truck. Fell off. You know that sacrilegious? No kidding? Take it back. The guy ain't got no conscience. Can you imagine a thing like this? Hey, wait a minute. Come on. I don't suppose it would be any more sacrilegious if we bought it back after the wedding. Put it in the parlor. Wait a second. Got to return that after the wedding. Take it away. Yeah, hold on to those. Hey, that's funny. This is Louie's suit. What are you doing? I ain't wearing this. Don't worry about nothing. Louie don't need that suit until tomorrow. Yeah, but can't I wear my check suit with the belt on the back? No, you can't. It's a high-class wedding. You're going to wear that suit right there. Oh, but, Mom, this suit belonged to Louie. I bet I know what killed him. This collar choked him to death. What are you taking a collar off for? What's the matter with ah, you? Grab him. Hey, you fellas, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Everything. Get us back on. You must not move into that house, I tell you. You made one mistake, Tony, but not buying it from the Elbows. Now, don't make another mistake. Get that face from Gibson. Yeah, but Gibson's getting married today. Why don't we uh, just wait? Do you question my orders? No, it isn't that, Amos. It's just that... Uh... I can't see why this guy'd be any worse in that house than the Elwoods. You can't see. That old couple was too frightened to interfere. But nobody knows what this young fool will do. All right, Emma. I'll get it. And try to use your head. Get him alone. All right. Come on, kid. Now, don't take that off again. Hey, the fellow's ready yet. It's about time to get started. What's the matter? Clippy's neck was a little bit too big for the collar, but it's okay now. Oh, well, where's the tie? 
Great, Dave. Oh, well, goodbye. Thanks. There's a fellow outside that says he has to see you. I can't see him now. I'm getting married. He says it's important. Oh. Who is he? I don't know, but he says it'll just take a few minutes. Okay. I'll be right back, fellas. Hi, Jack. Oh, oh Tony, I haven't seen you for a long time. Where have you been? I've been busy. I know you're in a hurry and I won't take a bunch of your time. I want to buy that house on Elm Street. Oh, don't be crazy. I just bought it myself. I know you did, and I know what you paid for it. I represent a party that, uh, well, they're willing to double what you gave for it. Why? What do they want my place? What difference does it make? They want it? They're willing to pay for it? Well, the answer's no. Oh, wait a minute. You can't take a bride in a house like that? Look, suppose you tell me what all this mystery about that house is, huh? Haven't you heard? You know that big estate next door? Yeah. It's haunted. <laughs> what do you know? All right, laugh if you like, but uh, why do you think they sold it to you so cheap? Well, who lives next door? And why do they want my place? Well, let's say that they're eccentric. They don't like neighbors. All right, now that's perfect. Don't touch nothing. Okay, line up like I told you. And don't forget your crescendos and diminuendos, and I don't want no altercations in the lyrics. Let's go. <laughs> You're out of step, you lug. Well, you can see why you don't want to take your wife to a place like that. No, I guess I don't, but she has a heart set on going there tonight. I understand that. Look, Jack, it's $500 to find the deal. Why don't you take your wife away for a few days? You know, on a honeymoon? You have to do that anyway. Explain about the house when you get back. If I had more time, I... Oh, look, get all about business till you come home. Here, yeah. when you get ready to close the deal, write me at this address. They'll get in touch with you. This is the place next to mine, huh? Yeah. A haunted house. Uh, okay. Okay. Just a word of warning. When you do get back, write to me. Don't go out there. Yeah, okay, okay I'll see you later. Cats, welcome back to Offbeat Cinema. You've heard the stress dolls here on Offbeat, and I'm here with a very special guest, Chelsea O, oh, who is the lead singer for the stress dolls. Chelsea, welcome to the Hungry Ear. Thank you for having me, Theo. Well, <laughs> we're glad to have you. So, um, we've been, you know, we've been really uh, digging your music here on Offbeat, and I want to talk to you a little bit about. Uh, Where's it come from? Where, where, are you, where are you getting these sounds from? Uh, influences or just my inspiration? Both, both, yeah. Uh, well, inspiration-wise, I'd say that typically it's um, experiences from my life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard for that to not <laughs> sure. be what comes out in the music. And uh, that ranges from everything from, uh, as I mentioned before playing, I have chronic illness, and um, that definitely has had a huge impact on my life and my world. Sure, and uh, sure. you know, it's been cathartic to get it out of music, uh, but also just life circumstances, and you know, like anybody else, um, breakups, friendships, <laughs> yeah, all sorts yeah. of stuff. Uh, and influence-wise, I it's always a tough question to answer, but um, I love the replacements. One of my favorite bands, Love sure. Jimmy Eat World, another favorite band of mine. Right. Um, right. So, kind of that like alt rock, pop nice. sort of thing. Yeah. Nice. And and how long have you been with uh, Stress Dolls? Stress Dolls has been happening in some form for about ten years. Wow. Um, it started out called Wolf, but then it became Stress Dolls. But it's pretty much the exact same music was carried over. So. Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, you know what we do here is uh, movies and music. But I do want to talk to you a little bit about the movies because that's what we do first. Now, um, give us some of your favorite films. Oh, man. <laughs> As I, a musician, you oh, know, man. you're kind of blending right. the two things that we like best here at Offbeat. Okay. All right. Well, I'm so not 
a total movie buff. I have to admit that right off the bat. But um, if I were to have a favorite movie, I really weirdly love the movie Adventureland. Oh, cool. I don't know why. Something about that movie gets to me. I think it might have to do with the fact that the soundtrack is so incredible, and mm. it got me into a bunch of bands. I saw it when I was 17. Nice. And there were a bunch of bands on there that I had previously not listened to, like The Cure and The Replacements. And okay, some stuff. old school stuff. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Yeah. Well, what are your plans going forward uh, with, the, uh, with the Stress Dolls or in general? Uh, playing out of town as much as humanly possible. Okay. Um, you know, we have a show in Pittsburgh in December, and then nice. in the new year, I'm trying to plan some stuff. Uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, possibly getting out to Chicago. Wow, um, nice. Yeah, so just trying to reach more people and uh, hopefully recording more music. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly, uh, certainly dug your tunes here on Offbeat Cinema, and uh, we hope to see you again here at The Hungry Ear. Chelsea O, cats with the stress dolls. Now, let's get back to tonight's cool flick on Offbeat Cinema. Dig that guitar, too. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Dave. Dave. Beloved, we are assembled here today to join this man and this woman in holy marriage. For as much as these two persons have come hither to be made one in the holy estate, if there be any here present who know any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined in marriage, I require him now to speak or forever hold his peace. I now pronounce you man and wife.
Clint, 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 Betty, why don't you invite us all over to your new home? We could have a party. Well, I'd like to very much, Daddy, but... Uh... Well, it's all right, darling. We're not going out there tonight anyway. Not going to our new house? But, Jack, why not? Well, it's... <laughs> well, I made some extra money, so... I thought we'd take a little trip first. You know, honeymoon. You know anything about that, Clippy? Smooth to me. Well, a place needs an awful lot of fixing up, you know. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh... I hope you don't mind, darling. Oh, no, darling. Anything you want to do is all right with me. <laughs> you got lipstick all over you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 322 Elm Street. That must be his new house. So he is, maybe. Well, folks, I guess we'd better go. Come on, darling. Wait a minute, darling. Come on. Someday I hope to get married. You know that, Bruno? Someday. What do you got there, Bruno? Man, this is right. What's the idea of the pan? Nothing. I just had my mama to cook it, so it'd be nice and soft. Look at uh, here. I see what you mean. Right? Hey, where are those gangsters that are supposed to be here? Gangsters? Yeah, gangsters. Well, uh, maybe they lost the address, or uh, maybe you scared them away. Yeah, you look like an old-time scarer. Why don't you use some diplomacy? I got my diploma when I graduated from school. How did you graduate? Kindergarten? Oh, I skipped kindergarten. I was too old. More vanilla. Louise isn't going to like this. You shouldn't have sold that nice young couple the house without warning them. Now, Sarah, there's no use starting something that we can't actually prove. You know in your heart, John, there's something going on in that house next door that isn't strictly honest. But we don't know positively, Sarah. Why, John Elwood, how can you say that after all we've seen and heard in the last six months? Now, now, let's not talk about it anymore. We're out of there and finished with the whole thing. But I've not finished with it. What are you going to do? Phone the police. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. They'll ask a lot of questions, and the first thing you know, we'll be held as material witnesses. They don't have to know who gave them the information. Now, I wouldn't do it now, Sarah. Well, I would. Give me the police. Police Department. Lieutenant Brady speaking. This is Mrs. John G. I wish to report some mysterious goings on at 322 Elm Street. 322 Elm. What kind of goings on? Oh, there's noises and screams and people going in and out all hours of the night. All kinds of funny businesses. Who is this speaking? This is Mrs. John G. Hello? Hello? Trace that call. Send in Mulligan and O'Brien. Well, I think that's the place. Don't look very cheerful, though, does it? You certainly do not. Now, uh, come on, get your tools. We got a hard night's work. Come on, Glenn. beautiful flowers. Can't put ketchup on flowers. It is a pretty big place for two people, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, there's a house down there. Looks more like the place Jack was talking about. Yeah, it does, it does. What do I do with that card? Hey, Clippy, my eyes ain't so good. What's the number on that house? 322. Well, what's the number on that card? 322. That must be the place, then. Looks like it. 
Hey, what are you guys waiting for? We want to decorate this house tonight, not tomorrow. Let's go. We're coming. We're coming. Come on, guys. Let's go. All right. You got all the accessories? Yeah, we got yeah, everything. Got everything. Okay. Hey, Clippy, give me the key. Me, 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 me. Draco, me. Yeah, yeah. The key to the house. What key? You crazy? Look, I got the address. It's a little detail we overlooked, I guess. Well, let's go home. Yeah, yeah we'll see you back later, here. Dog. Ain't you got no ingenuity? Give me that hammer. Remind me to put a new glass in there in the morning. <laughs> hey, Muggs, watch out. You might cut your juggler. Bit. What's the matter with you guys? You scared? Well, I'm not, not a bit. <laughs> All right, then go on in. The rest of you lies can proceed me. What's eating you? Man, if I get lost in there, ain't nobody ever gonna find me. Eh, yeah, fine, you don't worry, in you go. In who goes? In we all go. Come on, quit stalling. Sure, well, go on. Wait, wait, wait to do. Look like a brave pipe. Well, go ahead, Cliff. Uh, don't you think the lawn needs mowing or something like that? What are you gonna do, take the water off your knees? Get in there. Kind of misty in here. Anybody got a match? Oh, watch out, you're scared of bats. That's better. Take a look in here. Jack wasn't kidding when he said this place would need fixing up. Look at that. No curtains, no drapes, no lamps, no knickknacks, no nothing. Where are we going to get some furniture? What about that house next door? What about it? Well, I saw a sign. It says, uh, it's all completely furnished. What do you want us to do? Buy another house? Oh, just buy the furniture. Let someone else buy the house. That's good. It's the best idea you had in 10 years. Let's go take a look, fellas. Put that stuff down. Okay. I'll give you a water bag. Monk, there's boys in the house. What do we do? We'll make that place look like a million bucks. Oh, oh you are right. kidding. The door's open. Hmm. They must trust their neighbors. Wow, this is really nice. Lamps, drapes, books, everything. I wonder why he bought that old house next door instead of this one. Yeah, I guess there wasn't uh, enough room in the yard for victory garden, huh? But you'll make some improvements over there with this stuff. Yeah, but do you think we should really take these things? They slight me. Jack can pay for it later. Hey, I'm Chelsea from Stress Dolls uh, from Buffalo, New York, and you're about to see the music video for my latest single, Ghost Rider. Uh, Ghost Rider, the song, came out on October 13th, Friday the 13th, <laughs> uh, on Sun Pedal Recordings, uh, but this music video was done by my friend Brandon Schlia. And uh, Brandon is just a creative mastermind. I love working with him. We've collaborated on many projects in the past. Um, one was an album, and he's worked on a past music video of mine, so I knew I wanted him for this project. And uh, we came up with this kind of crazy um, idea that was somewhat film noir inspired, somewhat Christina Ricci and Casper inspired. <laughs> and so I hope that you dig it. And if you'd like to watch it or learn more about Stress Styles in general, like upcoming shows and when we'll be coming to your area, go to stressstylesmusic.com. Well, I can't turn away. No, I can't. 
Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh, uh, can you give us a room and a bath? Yes, sir. <laughs> What's funny, dear? Oh, well, that's an old joke. I say, can you give us a room and a bath? And, and he's supposed to say, well, I can give you a room, but you'll have to take the bath yourself. <laughs> <laughs> really? Would you care to register, sir? Uh, thanks. How does that look, Mrs. Gibson? I like it. Very much. Oh, uh, are you uh, Mr. John Gibson? Oh, yeah. Sure, look here. Got my, uh, my draft card, social security, driver's license, automobile club, uh... You want to see marriage certificate? No, thank you. I have a message for you. Message? Call Chelsea, 5518, apartment 243. Who the dickens is Chelsea, 5518? I don't recognize the number. It sounds like a hotel. They said it was most urgent. Well, they did, huh? Well, uh, where are the phone booths? Right over there, sir. Oh, uh, well, come on, darling. Uh, hold everything, huh? Yes. Well, this is John Gibson. What can I do for you? Oh, Mr. Gibson. It's about your house. This is Mrs. John G. Elwood. I thought you should know the truth about it. What do you mean? Uh-huh. Uh, well... Well, look, when we go there, I'll take along a big box of ghost powder. I just wanted you to know that I'd reported it to the police, and they should be out there by now. Well, what did you do that for? Well, of course I mind. I don't want a lot of cops poking around out there. Oh, okay, okay. Well, well just forget it. All right, goodbye. What's the matter, darling? That was Mrs. Elwood. She sent the police to investigate the place next door to our house. There's something fishy about the whole thing. I'm glad we didn't go out there now, aren't you? Well, I'm not. I, I think we ought to go out there right now. Right now? Yep. But, honey... Come on, darling, don't be frightened. Who said anything about being frightened? 
Yeah. Oh, darling. Oh, you got a nice hotel here. We sure enjoyed our stay. Come on, darling. Short day. All right, come on, step on it. You ain't getting no overtime for this. Hey, Dave. Come on, wake up. Come on. Okay. Get out of there and take that chair with you. I'll carry this ashtray. Watch out for the glass on the way out. Right here. Now we got something to work with. You two fellas start to put up the wallpaper over there, and Rocky and Danny, you put up the curtains and drapes. Okay. And get them nice and cylindrical. Slippy, you can squeeze. Thanks, Chief. What are you doing? Didn't you tell me I could sleep? Not sleep, sweet. Get up off there and go to work. Dust off that rust. Okay, Chief. What are you going to do? I got to think. I'm the supervisor. Oh, what do I always have to do stuff for? I'll give you a consolidation. Do a good job and I'll reduce your dues for the next three months. Thanks, Chief. And don't split that wood with those screws. What is this, Bob? Oh, Mark. And don't get too much glue on that paper. It sticks out through there. It makes lumps. Okay, okay. Hey, you know that goes under the drapes, not over them. Did you ever dress no houses? No. You know, Theo, as I look around, I see there really are a lot of wise guys out there who could do with a fat lip or a good knuckle sandwich if they don't pipe down, if nothing else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yes, Bird. And, and speaking of wise guys and dames, the viewer mail is in. And I do mean in, way, way in. Yeah. What do you have, Bird? Well, let's see if I can give this guy a pass or not. Anyway, this is a piece of mail from Jeb Yonder in Knoxville, Tennessee. And he says, this, if not the one, possibly the best show ever created, baby. And he's talking about us. Sure, sure he is. <laughs> I had to look twice. <laughs> and he goes on to say that Zelda is fine like so divine, Bird is cool, and Theo is a book of info. Daddy, this show should be on every day. He watches us on Retro TV down in Knoxville, and he watched the show faithfully for years, and he just discovered that it's still on the air. The skies are open again. So cool. Well, thank nice. you, Jeb, and we're glad we're... Uh, keeping you in the cool vibes every week out there in, did I see Nash? I, it's Knoxville, Tennessee. Go figure, I've got music on my brain. All right. Well, you know, the skies are open again. I kind of like, that's poetry, man. Yeah, man, he, that's, he's that's a poet, he, and maybe he even knows it. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to go closer to home now with this one. Uh, this is from right here in Buffalo, and it's from Luca Stout, who is wishing us a happy 30th anniversary and would love to see if uh, his jazz duo could be here at the coffee house, uh, Custode and Parisi. And, and I don't see why we couldn't arrange that at some point, Bert, no? We've, we've had uh, uh, dozens and dozens of uh, famous and soon to be and never to be famous guests, never. so uh, <laughs> we're, we're open. In fact, we got a band playing tonight, so why not? But anyway, uh, back, you know, you can always, uh, uh, Write us, email us, send us all kinds of things, even thinly veiled cries for help. We're here for you. Send it to the address on the screen. But uh, online, we're here all the time, 24-7, offbeatcinema.tv, where you get to see all the cool stuff that we have, the uh, offbeat swag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Let's mm -hmm. not forget the swag. And we got a whole YouTube channel. You can check out whole episodes and lots of segments and lots of fun stuff that you'd never see on the actual TV. So uh, we're, we're covered, we think, um, in, in the real world and in the cyber world and whatever other world that you want us to be in, we're here for you. But now back to Bella 
and the East Side Kids in Ghosts on the Loose. What are those lights doing on? Who is that in there? It's a gang of kids. They're friends of Jack Gibson's. You know, the guy that bought the house next door. Is it some more of your bungling, you stupid fool? How'd I know they were coming out here? I'll get rid of them, though. Come on, Bruno. Yeah, let me get my hands on them. Now, wait a minute. Why do I have such idiots around me? Let's find out what Hilda knows about it. I don't know. He went up to see. Idiots. Imbecile. It's all of you. Come for you. The altitude too much for you? No, 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 no. That picture up there. He's alive. Who's alive? Him, him, up there. First place, it's not a him, it's a her. Please believe me. There was a him a minute ago. Ah, uh, you're seeing things. Seeing things? Man, I heard him growl. All right. Take it easy now. Relax. You've been drinking too much coffee. What coffee? Hey, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? Go to work. Come on, step on it. Come on, Danny, get those doilies hung. Yeah. Maybe we should have bought a spirit level to make sure they was even. Coffee drinker. Napoleon must be awful hot with that coat on. It's the best example of slow motion I've ever seen. Come on, hurry up. Limpy, we'll play statues later. Get back on that broom. I'm oh, just trying to figure out where I, uh, where I should sweep that dust from here into the hall or the dust from the hall into here. Just sweep it clockwise. Okay, Chief. He took his coat off. He had it on. He took it off. Look. He took his coat off, huh? You look. Well, what do you know? He put it back on. What's going on around here anyway? You going goofy too? Don't answer that. Just go over and lie down next to Scruno. Wait a minute. Shut up. Let's not have any animosity. Yeah. 
Are you sure you saw what you saw? Sure, I'm sure. But I, I tried to tell Muggs. Gee, I'm back there sweeping, I got a boom in my hand. I look up at the point, he's got a coat on, he's standing like that. Then I turn around and he's got... Hey, look, now he's in his long drawers. Get down off there. I'm going to send you to an optimist and have your eyes examined. Come on down. Huh? If I have to go up there and get you, I'll stab you with one of those horns. I want you two to quit clowning. Clowning? Who's clowning? Quit clowning. The thing was right. Hello? Stop acting like a couple of hysterical dames. Who's acting like a hysterical dame? I saw it in school and saw it too, didn't you, school? Nothing else but. Come on, let's go home. I ought to slug the both of you. You're imagining things. It's all in your mind. <laughs> now, whose mind is that in? Did you hear that? Take me, I heard it. You think I'm deep? Come on, let's go home. We ain't gonna go no place. We're gonna find out what that was. You know what he said? We're gonna find out what it was. Well, you guys find out what it was. I'll be in the car waiting for you. You wait right there. I said we're gonna find out what it was, and I meant it. Hey, Glimpy. Chief? You go first. Sightly. What am I saying? What's the matter? You scared? Scared? I'm not scared of nothing, but I'm not going out there. You want to go out, so you go out and see what it was. You gonna let me go up there all alone? Yeah. yeah. Remind me when we get back to town to give you the Iron Cross for bravery, right over the skull. Sure, I'll go find out what it was. What are you doing? The noise came from that direction. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I thought uh, maybe shortcut over there would be. Uh, What's the matter with you? That's just an echo. Just an echo. See that? What I tell you. There's nothing to be scared of. That's what you think. Well, boys, here we go again. Get out of the for me! Open the door! Open the door! Open the door! Open that door! Uh-oh, there goes that echo again. 
I hope not. What do you mean, man? Well, he told us not to come out here, remember? Yeah, you're right. He had a lot of extra dough when he left, too. Where did he get that? That's probably where this stuff comes in. Yeah, and how could he buy a big house like this? Why, well, you shut your big mouth. You want him to punch her right in the nose? Oh, stop drooling. We got to figure this thing out. This is no time to argue. The old brother-in-law. I can't believe it. I'll never be able to face the Boy Scouts again. Ah, don't feel bad, Goofy. We're not sure it was your brother-in-law. We're only guessing. What do you got in your mind, Mark? I don't know. If anybody else found that stuff here, I know what they'd think. Yeah, that's right. Maybe we'd better get it out of here. Where are we going to take it? Why don't you put it in the house next door? Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Well, you actually think I was a bully or something. That's a good idea. Put it in the house next door. Go on, move it, boys. Come on, guys. Watch your hands under there, too. Right they are taking the press out. Let them go. But they're taking the press. Let them take the evidence next door. They'll remove all the suspicion from us. Did you find anything in there? No, nothing in there. Oh, we better take a look upstairs. Okay. We'll go with the room thoroughly and see that nothing is left to incriminate us. Yes, sir. Tony, you come with me. It was okay letting Gibson buy that house, huh? Yes, that was a lucky mistake you made. Nothing there. Huh? Nothing there. Oh, well, we better take what's downstairs then. Well, that door wasn't open before, was it? Was that door there when we come in? Was that door there when we came in? No! It's just this minute grew. Appreciates what we're doing for him. He certainly should. As his brother-in-law, I personally thank you, one and all. Nothing down here. Don't look like it. Hey, I got a good idea. Let's call the cops. What, with our fingerprints all over there? The best idea you can get is not to get any more ideas.
Let's see if the people in that little place know anything about it. Yeah. We should have left that door open. Hey, there's Jack and Betty. Well, we sure got them out of a tight spot just in time. Well, darling, here's our little love nest. Oh, Jack. Wonderful. Yeah. Huh. With a couple of cops hammering at the door. I wonder who that is. Let's have a look. Well, did you find anything? Uh, no. No, there's no one around here. Say, by the way, who, who might you be? I'm Jack Gibson. This is my wife. We just bought that little place. Oh, I see. Uh oh. We got our signals crossed. Jack bought that little house, not the big one. I got both. You're right. We better get that press back out of there. Let's go. Well, we were sent out to look over that big place there. At least I know. Uh, the people we bought our house from seem to think something funny's going on. Well, we couldn't find anything wrong. <laughs> it's probably their imagination. You know how old folks are. <laughs> well, we'll be heading back to the station now. If you hear anything, give us a ring. Well, I don't think we'll bother you tonight. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. <laughs> Show it to the cops. R 17, Mulligan speaking. We just looked the place all over. There's nothing here but a couple of newlyweds. <laughs> Looks a little bad, doesn't it? I can't understand it. There should be more furniture here. Yeah, it would help, but I still think it's awful cute. Well, easy. Easy. Need some help? There you are. No, thanks. Leave it just the way it was now. Okay, let's tell the law. Come on. Guess I may as well get the grips. Okay, we're coming right in. Just what I was about to ask you. Oh, that's a long story. We were decorating that house. Yeah, we thought it was yours. We found a printing press with a lot of nasty propaganda. Yeah, we thought it was yours, so we moved it over here. Yeah, then we found out that was yours, so we moved it back again. Nazi propaganda? Sure. So that's why they didn't want us to come out here. Why didn't you phone the police? We thought it was yours. Is there a phone next door? Yeah, but that ain't yours. Well, come on. Well, I'll confuse it, though. Won't you What? There it is. Get me police headquarters. Hello? This is 322 Elm Street. Tell Send them. a couple of men out here right away. Yeah, tell them about the Nazis. Yes, I know they've been here, but send them back. Yes, they've gone. That's right, thank you. Rich, you must get the press back to that cottage. They're calling the police. Hurry up. Let's go, pick it up. Calling car 17. Calling car 17. Return at once to 322 Elm Street. Urgent. That is all. We just came from there. Let's go. Go 
ought to be here any minute. Who? Oh. oh, he's not free. Get in here, you're now. Come on, Jack. Okay. We tried to call you back, but you didn't hear us. There's a lot of intimidating evidence in that house. Hey, what is this, a gag? Well, these boys have found a printing press in the basement with a lot of subversive literature all over the place. It must be a Nazi hideout. How about the people? Seen any signs of them around? We heard a lot of noises, didn't see no people. Well, we better take a look. Yeah, follow me. We got all the evidence down to get it. Right on it. The body. The body. The body. How can you picture that? I must be having optical delusion. What's the matter? Well, it was a printing press here ten minutes ago. Well, just got up and walked away, huh? Well, if ink can run, I guess a printing press can walk. Hmm. That's right. You can still see the ink on our hands from where we touched it. That dirt could have been on your hands for the last six months, for all we know. Come on, we better get out of here before we start seeing things ourselves. I'm telling you, it was dead. I don't always look like that. I don't know if there was a visible ink on it right there. All right, all right. It was there, and you saw it. But it ain't there now. They can't figure this thing out. We seen that press with our own eyes. So did I. That's what I said. It didn't just disappear. Somebody must have taken it out of here. You know, I think. Yeah, I'll do all the thinking around here. All right, go ahead, think. You always think and think. Think a while. Oh, you're such a smart guy. We should think. Hey, Mums. Look. What do you think that's for? Mice. <clears throat> Mice. You'll never learn nothing, will you? Hey, I bet that's how they got that press out of here. Just keep quiet. You follow me. Nobody here. Let's go home. What are you, a coward? Go in there already. What are you talking about? Hey! Uh, it's got my hands. I'll put you right and go. Come on, Pat. Hey, wait a minute. That's funny. Now what? Those well, lights in my cottage. I turn them out. Now the lights are turning themselves on and off. Come on, Pat. Go ahead if you want to. I want to see for myself. Come on, Betty. I'm going to find out for himself, too. like the printing press. Ah, so it does. So it does. Ah, what are these? What do these look like? They look like them same things we all have been telling you all about. What's it doing here? That's something you'll get a chance to explain, man. You'd better think fast. Oh, now, look, you, you don't think this belongs to me. This is your house, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but... We better find Monks and tell him. You ain't kidding. Well, looks like Come on. Take a ride. Come on. Listen, officer, this is absolutely ridiculous. All I know is the press is on your property. 
I'll have to take you to headquarters to talk to the lieutenant. Hey, fellas! Jack, come here! We saw him down the tunnel. They got Muggs and Glippy and they took him to a room. All right, but this is the last time I'll believe any of you. O'Brien, beat it back to the house and go down the basement. I'll look down the tunnel. The first time since I knew you that you couldn't say nothing. Are you kidding? You boys stay with her. Okay, Jack. Hurry up. They got Muggs and Glimpy in there. Let me have a try at that. Hey, what's that? Must be somebody in there. Uh, must be some way to get in there. Yeah. Look around here. We better get out of here, boss. Clint! Follow me, I'll show you. Get ready. Hey, come on, Hey, Mom! Playing leapfrog. Let me have it. In shape, honey? Let's go. Always got to do everything the hard way. Everybody else can plain, ordinary common measles. So you got to go out and dig up German measles. What are you picking on me for? I know them guys were Nazis. Did you know I'm sick? <laughs> I'll throw it on you. Don't so, Clumpy, I apologize. And remember, you've got seven days more to go. Yes, the East Side Kids. You know, they're very funny cats, and I can't believe we haven't shown them before in Offbeat Cinema. But, you know, this was a great show tonight, even if it was Zelda approved. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was not. But it's a cool movie, and I think this is one of their more interesting films. Again, with Bela Lugosi in there, there's some other very good East Side Kid films, and we might be bringing you one of those very soon. How cool would that be? But, you know, that's how we roll here, cats. We bring you the movies that must be shown, the good, the bad, the foreign. We show the movies that if we did not show them, they'd slip away for good. Oh, you know, Bird, you are correct. We do try to bring you movies of every description. And sometimes we challenge you with silent films or subtitled films, or maybe films you've never even heard of before. But we know that you cats out there in the dark are always up for the challenge. We know it in our hearts. You're up, you're here with us, watching us in the dark. So join us next time for another edition of Offbeat Cinema coming right here in the Hungrier Coffee House where the coffee's always hot and the movies are oh so cool. So until next time, remember, now more than ever, keep watching the sky. Just keep watching the sky.
isn't this a perfect setting for a spine-tingling ghost story? Well, strangely enough, this is a ghost story. Do you scare easily? Do you have nightmares? Do shadows on the wall front you? <laughs> well, relax. This isn't that kind of a story. And just to prove it, let me introduce a ghost that is out of this world. His name is Casper. Ever and now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.